attack. It's just about 17 hours from that attack that has claimed the lives of 48 Kenyans. Efforts are underway. We do expect the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, Joseph Olelenku, to address the nation any minute now. But to help us understand what is happening and probably look forward at solutions, I'm joined by two gentlemen who will help us just make sense of the situation. Francis Mine is a security consultant and I'm also joined by Professor Noah Midamba, who's a professor of defense and foreign policy from the KCA University. Gentlemen, Karibu Sana. Yes, um, this is a question that I like to start uh, every conversation I'm having, especially this morning. What do you make of this, Professor? My friend, I, 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 I think Kenya mm -hmm. is a, a very different place mm -hmm. uh, than the place that you know right. a while ago. Mm -hmm. And so what is happening to me is not a surprise. What we need to understand mm -hmm is the moment we walk into Somalia, right. we walk in a contested zone. Mm -hmm. And it's like a beehive. You know, they're all together. And when you go in, you scatter them. And so the issue for me are several things. One is we need to mobilize this country. We need to reassess our approach completely from the beginning, mm -hmm. both intelligent mm -hmm. and armed forces. Right to understand that we are in a long-term war that is not going to be terminated in a month, in a, in a, uh, in a week, in a year. Right. <clears throat> and therefore, we need to mobilize Kenyans at the grassroots level, at the village person. Mm -hmm. The village person need to understand who is who around them. How many children do they have? Which one has not been seen the last two weeks. Which we are trying to do with Nyumbakumi. Which we are trying to do with Nyumbakumi. Right. Now, then, then we need to, 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 uh, to understand our environment. Our environment is that we have a very large number of young people <laughs> who are in, um, unemployed, who are hopelessly on the street. And then we have an acceptable level of corruption in the country. So we, one hand, we uh, have this excursion right. uh, with the purpose to protect our country. We never done that before in Kenya. But we start these people up and then we have a corrupt uh, environment and we have a porous border. So the people we were fighting <coughs> are in here with us. Mm -hmm. And therefore we need a, a, a complete reassessment right. of our security system, our approach and beginning with setting up a system which armed our security, our intelligence. Mm -hmm. This war is fought on intelligence and will be won on intelligence. Pro Pro Professor Holder, so let me just bring in Francis Minor in this conversation. Francis, this is an attack that is happening just days after the British High Commission closed their consulate in the country. The weeks after a travel advisory that saw hundreds of tourists leave for their own countries. What do you make of this? Uh, first and foremost, my prayers and my thoughts go to the families of those who've been killed and those who've been injured. Right. <coughs> On the issue of advisory in Mombasa, which was done by the British High Commissioner last week, or the British government, it is so painful that uh, in this country, after several terrorist attacks, mm -hmm. we have not even been able to put our house in order right. and bring up institutions governed by the law from Parliament, because since Westgate, right. September 21st, Francis, the, 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 the law, the Parliament has not passed the even one single bill right. to protect the Kenyans. Let me move from there. Okay. What <clears throat> I would like to say is, mm -hmm. our advisories are done because in this country, mm -hmm. I mean, unless we are taught from outsiders, we might have very good friends mm -hmm. who tell us every now and then, but it has come to a time probably mm -hmm. they are getting tired. Mm -hmm. So it is of our own interest to come up with very amicable institutions mm -hmm. right. which are done through the legal framework mm -hmm. of parliament right. and they are able to fight these criminal elements of terrorism. Correct. Because you see, without intelligence, mm -hmm. there is nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. If you go to Quanco, Virginia, of the CIA or the FBI in, uh, in Langley, they sell, they buy intelligence. The reason why you see the American troops in Afghanistan, the forward team is the CIA and the FBI. 
it goes there to correct intelligence it buys intelligence from people right it works with the local community mm -hmm. it's able to penetrate and break the al-qaeda networks right and it's able to man unmanned aerial vehicles to hit the most wanted criminals mm -hmm. here in this country you get like Lamu in an attack four hours down the line there is no backup right. then why should we have concentration of police officers based in Nairobi right. when we don't have a exterior command post based on hot post yeah. Francis we'll get to the issue of how Intel trickles down from when we receive it to when we implement it and just before I get to the professor just a quick reminder if you're watching us wherever you are right now is that we're expecting the CS4 interior Joseph Olelenku any minute now to address the nation from the steps of Harambe house where we do expect to get a clearer indication of exactly what this is about who are these people and what the security officers are indeed doing but let's get back to our discussion Noah as a professor of foreign in policy and defense everyone has been saying these are retaliatory attacks it's because we went into Somalia yes all we've had all that but how do we do what do we do now from a foreign policy standpoint <clears throat> several things that we need to do and my friends here enumerated mm -hmm. some of those yes um, one is we need to put ourselves on a war path mm -hmm. the whole country the whole apparatus uh, uh, Jogona in Kiambu, mm -hmm. uh, Ochiang in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. All these people need to understand that Kenya is no longer the same. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to understand what role each one of our team play, whether it's armed forces, the intelligent. Intelligent is one of the most effective instrument of this kind of war. But before we get there, right. we need to understand the mindset of the terrorists. Mm -hmm. What is it these people want? And there are two possible options here. Mm -hmm. One is that they're religious sailors who are trying to turn the whole world into their mode of religion right. and those kind of things. Right. That exists. Osama bin Laden was an example. Then they are opportunists who are looking for lawlessness, mm -hmm. like in the case of Kismayu, right. so that they can trade and do whatever they want without protection. Now, who's worst? Uh, they're both uh, the, the both same. Are, both are bad. Now, when you have a situation mm -hmm. uh, where there is a porous border, mm -hmm. where there's a level of corruption, mm -hmm. where there is a very high number of, of lawlessness mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, uh, of, 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 of people not working and mostly young people, mm -hmm. then you have an environment which is conducive to this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. How do you control it? Right. One, I said, let's put ourselves on a war path and forget these structured, intelligent uh, district meetings and all that. Get back to the grassroots level mm -hmm. and understand who is here, who is everywhere, and get in a crash course and invest money mm -hmm. to document every Kenyan who are here. And that intelligent need to go to the master information. Because what we're doing with CCTV may, may not work. And I can tell you, in my own university, I set up CCTV. But very quickly, some people went and taper with it and <laughs> right. painted. Right. Now, then we have a country which is not accessible to CCTV. So most of these people are very intelligent. They take their time. They don't react. And they're going to hit outpost which are lying. They will not come to area where, where the noise is guarded like the airport. Mm -hmm. They are going to be in outposts. So we are hugely vulnerable, but because we, we are not utilizing the resources that we have. Right. Every re potential resource we need to use. Our people, our intelligent base, mm -hmm. and our friends. Right. And I can tell you among our friends, like my friend here alluded, mm -hmm. I spent 30 years in the United States right. and I learned intelligent gathering and all the security in the United States. The only three countries right now in the world that can work in partnership effectively with Kenya is U.S., uh, British, and the Israelis. These are the very same people we are shying away from. Well, that's, is, that's a big mistake. Right. Okay, the big mistake is we cannot go around verbalize who's our friend professor, and, and professor, who's, who's as a, our as enemy. A, as a practitioner of, of foreign policy, um, we've seen situations where 
security advisories are dealt with as political statements, like what we had from the UK. Yes. And we had even uh, government coming to say, well, well, maybe it's time to look for other tourist, uh, tourists from, say, China and, and such like worlds. Should it get to that level where we rubbish this kind of alerts based on uh, differences in trade? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't blame people who, who speak because sometimes uh, they, they need more, more education mm -hmm. in order to talk. Mm -hmm. But we have to have a country which is disciplined and controlled. Members of parliament, most of them have no understanding of intelligence at all. Right. And, you know, they, they need to focus on agriculture and all other things, you know, to, to, to help the country. Mm -hmm. Leave intelligent to intelligent people. Because we have trained Kenyans who have spent years studying this subject, right. who are in the armed forces. I, I respect, you know, our armed forces very much. We went into a very tough situation for the first time. We were underrated. But the heroes fought, fought seriously mm -hmm. and made us proud. Now, so we need to bring all these people plus our friends on board mm -hmm. to reassess completely the way we are approaching mm -hmm. this and have the rest of the people qu keep quiet if right. they don't know what they are talking Professor, about. Professor, I've, I've maintained on this that the problem fundamentally is not, uh, it's how this information trickles down and I want to bring mine in this one. Um, l let's look at Westgate for example. There are reports are saying our NIS had this information that there was going to be a major attack at a major mall in the city. So yes, there is intelligence uh, from the different sources, from the locals, from, from our different partners, but we don't see trickle down to implementation. You see, the biggest threat we have in this country is our intelligence collection, mm -hmm. analyzation, distribution, mm -hmm. and effectively of the, di of the intelligence. In most cases, there is like a competition people want to to rubbish, you don't know much, I am in control, I am the big person, I am what. And you see, if I was in power at the moment, or being asked my opinion, right. is to make the intelligence family mm -hmm. independent, armed with an act of parliament, mm -hmm. that if they come across so such a threat... it's armed in an act of parliament, so yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're autonomous. Yeah, they're autonomous right. with the director of the National Intelligence Agency right. who is answerable to the CS. How different is that from what Kichang is Home run security. You see, if you look at the NSIS at the moment, mm -hmm. NIS now, uh, uh, now the National Intelligence right. Services, mm -hmm. it was watered down by an act of parliament for the fear of the political persecution. Now, we have another threat. It is no longer politics. You can go talk every day, we have mobiles, you know what you talked about. But now we have a threat, a global threat, <coughs> an extremist, fundamentalist organization, mm -hmm. which has branched, there is the, the Yemen uh, Al-Qaeda, there is the East African Al-Qaeda, there is the Maghreb, there is the Indian, you know, the Indonesia so Peninsula. The different faces of terrorism are there is a, yet our Philippines. intelligence is not. Our intelligence needs to match with the same time frame right. of the 21st century. Mm. What is the threat in Kenya? It is no longer politics. Right. Court can go, Jubri can go and discuss whatever they want in a public rally. Mm. But the threat to the national security is terrorism, is the war on terror. Gentlemen, in terms of specifics and low-hanging fruits that we can leverage in this situation, what can we do in the immediate term? to correct this, Professor? Immediately, the members of parliament need to get together and, and answer directly what Kimani is talking about mm -hmm. in terms of emergence, sense of emergence. Right. An act of intelligence mm -hmm. that is responsible directly to the president of the mm -hmm. country, right. not between bureaucracy and everything. Mm -hmm. We need to mobilize Kenya, beginning from the village level, right. and mm -hmm. make sure that Kenyans understand we are up to. Two, we need to understand the mindset of the enemy that we face. Mm -hmm. What is it they want? Who, who, who are these people? Mm -hmm. And we need to sensitize our people mm -hmm. so that your husband is not just your husband. Is she doing something different? <laughs> uh, your wife, you know, is there something about? You know, the, the, the intelligence that I have deployed in the university, a little university, is that every student report to me mm -hmm. about any funny thing that's going on in the university. And the, my staff are surprised how much information I know. Mm -hmm. But because I am sensitive about the potential soft target threat, right. I want to make sure that my campus is safe. 
And we can apply this on the same level, same level in the country. Mm -hmm. We need to bring our friends, okay? British is our friend, long-term friend. Right. America is our long-term friend. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Israelis are our long-term friend. Mm -hmm. They are equipped and they fought this kind of thing for many years. Mm -hmm. So don't turn them into enemies. We need every single friends and network that we can get right. in order to deal over a long period of time. We are in a war for a very, very long time. Right. And not one year. Bona mina, yeah. in, the, in the immediate term, what can we do? What would you propose? In the medium term, immediately, right. the parliament should convene and have a bipartisan yeah. committee. Of security of so this the kind, kind of, of noises we are seeing in the political no, no, space are not healthy for this no, no, we need to time. we need to shut up and uh, move on with a very serious subject and i had told one of the members of the national security committee of parliament mm -hmm. they need to have a bipartisan mm -hmm. like the one of after september 11 in right, the u.s right which you come up with a framework mm -hmm. of the way forward mm -hmm. on security management intelligence collection and also the powers of the security apparatus, their operation way of doing, mm -hmm. so that we have, if we arrest a terrorist, he doesn't go to court tomorrow. Right. We can put and him on an, an administrative detention. Right. We can put him in a small detention camp, mm -hmm. which the chief justice, through the Pfizer judges who are not gazetted, can put him on a detention so that we are able to protect our country. Then we also need to purify our intelligence collection distribution so that the president of the country is briefed by one person mm -hmm. on matters of national security. And that is the national security advisor to the president. Right. Nobody else. Now you get so many people yeah. swamped to mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. with the different versions of their own interested mm -hmm. security uh, ideologies right and that's why you get we are getting so ma we are in a market Magic. situation mm -hmm. we are in a mad we are we are in a quagmire right. we are stuck and without that one this country as much as we get oil gold diamonds investors will just look at it from a distance mm -hmm. if you ask yourself how much oil is in, in Somalia it's a lot there is nobody drilling it because there is no security in that country. Mm -hmm. How much oil and gas reserves are held by Libya? People are running away from the investment because there is no security. And obviously security costs yes. as well because just coming from Peketoni earlier today, uh, one of our reporters spoke to the owner of the establishment that was put down, but that was raised down, and he said he lost close to 80 million shillings in just one night. Mm -hmm. And you see, what I was trying to say, and I, I wish we could learn uh, the tape back again. If you see our policemen, running in um, Pegatoni today in uniform. They have no equipment. They need a body armor. They need a bulletproof helmet. They need night vision goggles, because this is not an, app an application for only between 6 and 6 in the evening. They have to go at but, night, but operate you know, we, at we, night. We spend about 180 billion shillings but on, you see, on defense the and security. Purchasing, mm -hmm. The purchasing... Where, where do we go wrong no, this? No, The problem is the purchases. Mm -hmm. They buy what they think our armed forces need. Me, I have always said, the operation commanders are the ones who are supposed to give the manifest, the list of, I need 700 machine gun, I need 100 RPG, I need anti-aircraft missiles, I need 78 anti-tank missiles. You know, you, 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 you quantify what you want, but the purchases, the logistics people, like in the police, they are, you get them, they are civilians. Right. They buy what they think. Right. And they buy from merchants, mm -hmm. mostly on briefcase, mostly people who have never dealt with uh, security operators, mostly people who want to make money, people who are well connected. You see, what we give our own security personnel, that is exactly what we get back. So why? Our policemen mm -hmm. do as much as what we give them. Right. And I'm not saying because of Uhuru's government. Right. The government have come before. We had Mahindras. They were about, they were going to go about 10 miles an hour. Thieves would run and just tease the, uh, the policemen. Right. Because uh, the Mahindras never, 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 could never be driven in the streets of Nairobi. So obviously there's an issue of, of procurement in all these issues. But it stems from a wrong structure that we have as it is. Mm -hmm. The structure of procurement 
is extremely wrong. And the advisors of the president on national security, the president needs to have his own friends who know security. They don't work with him. They are not paid by him. They will tell him red on the face. This thing is wrong. Right. You know, most of the people who surround the president and every president in the world, even pre President Barack <coughs> Obama, Prime Minister Cameron, right. they will just first salute and tell you, yes, sir, yes, sir, Fandi, mm -hmm. things are well. Because you see, you cannot bring yourself down. But you see the American system, the British system, right. the Jewish system, mm -hmm. they speak with the retired Mossad and uh, re retired Chin Bet, mm -hmm. and they tell him, Mr. President, there is something wrong. Yeah. Yes. Right, Maina, let's put a pause there and we're just realizing that terrorism has evolved yet our security apparatus haven't. I want to just throw this back to my colleague Edith Kimani who, who has um, more uh, info that we are, uh, as we continue to cover the Mfeketoni attack, just about 17 hours from that attack that has claimed the lives of 48 Kenyans. Edith? Well, we continue to watch the developments of this story. No doubt we'll be hoping to get a lot more information um, from Harambe House when the CS4 Interior, Joseph Olelenku, speaks. One percent uh, of the respondents uh, rated the national government poor on national security. Twenty-eight percent rated the national government average on national security, and eleven percent rated the national government good uh, on national security. And for the county governments, the highest score was on poverty and unemployment at 23%, economic development and infrastructure at 23%, that was a tie on the first two top issues, insecurity at 22%, well, that's actually an opinion poll um, in the back of what happened last evening in Peketoni, where more and more Kenyans across the country uh, do continue to question government's efforts in bolstering security within the borders. Right now, though, let me take you back to John Alanamu, who's continuing the analysis of this attack, uh, which has left 48 people dead. Namu. All right, we continue with our analysis here with security analyst Mwenda Benjiwa. The maps back up. We can see where these, where these attacks took place. Of course, there are other areas that took, uh, that took hits um, about 10 kilometers uh, uh, north of Mpeketoni. And actually, quite incidentally, that's where the attack ended at about 1 a.m. Yeah. And what they did is something that I'd like us to speak about. The attackers burnt the Nissans that they came in. Why would they do that? Uh, definitely, they know someone will investigate, and they know uh, an, an incident like this will, will involve FBI, CIA, Mossad, MI16. So what they exactly did was to ban the vehicles so that, among other things, their fingerprints will never be found, because they, they suddenly, you know, used to... And you realize everywhere they touch, they burnt. The banks, the police station, anything they touch, they burnt because they do not want to leave us any forensic e evidence except the guns they have used and the, ca the cartridges. That, that speaks to a very savvy or, or rather a very intelligent attacker that we're, we're speaking about here in being able to um, carry out all of these attacks, whether or not the, there was any intervention from the government. But in terms of the tactics that they used, where have you seen this before? This has actually happened uh, in a country like Nigeria, Boko Haram. They have been doing this quite often. And uh, this should come as a very strong warning to us that terrorists all over the world exchange ideas. Westgate, they borrowed from Mumbai. These, all these attacks, they, they share notes. Remember, it's the same family of terrorists all over the world. Yeah. They are Al-Qaeda-minded. They are all families of the Al-Qaeda. And like the other experts said in the other studio, they are all over there in, in, the, in, in Arabia. They are in, in the West Africa. They are all over the Indonesia. But it's the same family. They exchange the notes. So right. we should be now learning to, uh, for example, to guard our girls' schools so that we don't have the Boko Haram attack in a girls' school. Those kinds of things. We so that's should that's also be careful of things like terror. I mean, terror attack involving nuclear weapons. We yeah. should prepare. Let's, let's just hold that thought for a moment. Let me just give you an update uh, from uh, the Twitter the Twitter page of uh, State House, uh, saying stating that um, uh, Joseph Olelenko, after 
Well, we apologize. There seems to be a problem with John Alanamu's microphone, but what he was about to say is that there has been an update uh, from State House via Twitter saying that the CS will lead a delegation of security agents to Mpeketoni. We are yet unclear about when this will be or who exactly will be going. But let's just do a recap of what we do know so far. 48 people who were killed in an evening attack in Mpeketoni, which is, as we said earlier, five hours and 40 minutes drive from Mombasa town. It's actually 302 kilometers away from Mombasa, 54 kilometers away from Lamu. It's very um, crucial that we understand this because, as John Alanamu said earlier, the isolation of this uh, small town could be the reason why it was actually a target. There are various issues which uh, plague Mpeketoni, one of which is uh, land. This was originally a settlement scheme which was started in the 1960s by the first president of Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta. Um, and originally it was inhabited by Swahilis who were called Wabajuni. You might have heard them um, mentioned here and there. It was really a small community of hunters and gatherers who have since um, been almost extinct. And in the early 1970s, Mpeketoni was re re reformed or transformed, if you like, into a settlement area for the landless. Um, Bonnie Tunya has been talking about that all morning, trying to understand why this is significant, especially when trying to understand this attack. And most of those who settled there were Kenyans from up country, as he had mentioned earlier, who had been living in Tanzania, but decided to move back into Mpeketoni when the political climate changed. And so that's uh, where Bonnie Tunya will actually continue this discussion from. Um, and he is joined by Noah Midamba, who is the Vice Chancellor and CEO and also a professor of defense and foreign post policy at KC University and Francis Minor, who is a security consultant. Bonnie Tunya. All right, many thanks, Edith. And as you rightly put, this gentleman are here. Well, uh, <coughs> and that's the authority by which they speak. Um, gentlemen, we were just trying to understand the issue of intelligence and how it trickles down. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is also a lot of criticism that comes out and, and people are saying the intelligence system in Kenya has basically been reduced to information collectors and we, we don't really know how to use this information. We don't know where to take it once we've collected it. Is that true? You see, our biggest threat on in intelligence collection, we no longer have uh, covert agents. Mm -hmm. Covert agents are men, people who are the cover. You know me by Francis Minor, but that's not my real name. Mm -hmm. You know I do business on uh, selling spoons and uh, whatever merchandise, but I'm an undercover intelligence person. Mm -hmm. You see, when you get to that level, that you know each and every intelligence officer within the district, you go to every district meeting, you are introduced to the intelligence officer, to his juniors. So you see, when they go around and uh, walking around outside the public, they have very little or no access to any intelligence. Because mm -hmm. you see, nobody wants to be associated with, intelli with mm -hmm. intelligence officers. <coughs> mm -hmm. People give intelligence without their consent. Right. You only meet a white, you know, British or an Israeli business friend, then you start talking. He drives you slowly by slowly to the intelligence business. Mm -hmm. Then you start collecting intelligence for him, and you don't know. He puts you on a ladder that you are able to track somebody mm -hmm. they've been looking for several years, and then he gets you know him. So he's able to come through you you know, without your knowledge, you're able to he will entertain you, he will do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, he is collecting intelligence. He will leave, go back, he was a missionary, you don't know, you become friends, mm -hmm. you, you communicate. But at the end of the day, he has achieved his end. Right. In this country, intelligence officers, either they are in a suit or a tie,